Hello, beloved friends. I'm Reverend Kira Bayer, and it is my privilege to be with you here this day to invite us, each one of us, to go to that place within where we know the truth of who we are, where we experience the true divine nature, the infinite, as we're experiencing what is happening out here in the world, in this world that has limitations or the appearance of limitations. We are being invited to really come to a place where we have great compassion and spiritual compassion for ourselves and one another. And what I mean by that is that we um, are lifting ourselves and one another up into a place where we're not being hard on ourselves. You know, during this time, we get to be aware of what is it to really have compassion for what's happening in the world and also ourselves and, and notice the level of fear, the level of grief, uh, the, the stress or strain that is up in people's hearts and minds and lives. And as we experience both, whether it be the financial forecast and the situations that are happening with the stock markets, et cetera, or whether it be in the business and the unemployment and the various levels of this, or whether it be the actual coronavirus and those that are ill or uh, losing loved ones or uh, on the front lines working their hearts and souls out um, or whether there's just fear of what might occur. You know, we have a tendency to buy into all that fear and we're being invited to find an inner place where we can maintain truth and peace and harmony and uh, not be buying into a projection about what is going to occur as we go forward. And it's very difficult because we're tendency to look out to the future. And in this now moment, we're to live into the mystery of what is unfolding and begin to see the world with eyes of compassion, to see ourselves with eyes of compassion. And that includes even things like our fear or our grief. You know, we want to be a positive, uplifting presence, and we are. And yet we may be, as an empath, many of us as empaths or sensitives, connected into the grief or the fear that's out in the world. And so as we're doing this, we also need to honor with compassion those experiences within us. The other day, I posted a, a post on Facebook because I woke up experiencing this tremendous grief. I didn't really understand why at first. I was like, what is this grief all about? Because I didn't have a reason for it in my own soul. And what I realized in that moment was that it was a collective. But at the same time, then a picture popped up, a memory of my, my beloved dogs, Cosmo and Princess, that I lost both of them this last year and within six months of each other. And I, my heart hurt. You know, I felt the loss of my fur babies and I realized how perfect that I could individualize or personalize this uh, fear, this grief that is going on in the world right now. We are, the old world is going away. And as we are releasing what we've known and we're stepping into the unknown, there's both the fear and the grief. So I realized what a great opportunity. I allowed the grief to come up and out and realize what a gift to process that for the world. And we are in a time where we're learning to allow and have compassion for the experiences that are anyone is having at this point. And spiritual compassion is then not expecting myself to show up, oh, everything's gonna be okay, and I don't have any connection to the reality of this realm. I don't need to give power to this realm to decide for me how I am, who I am, as a divine and wondrous expression of the infinite, as a co-creator and able to create my, my world through consciousness. Yet at the same time, we are living in a physical world. And so if I have fear arise, or I have grief, or I have another experience, I need to have spiritual compassion with myself to know that it is, uh, it's okay, I'm still spiritually aligned. I'm still spiritually connected. It doesn't mean I've gone off track when I have those experiences rise up. And I think it's really important for all of us 
to understand that this is a time to have compassion, spiritual compassion, to let go of the places where we would tend to admonish ourselves or one another for somehow doing it imperfectly. Um, instead, this is a time of encouragement and support to see what the needs and the support is that's needed for one another in a moment and be a presence for that. I choose to be a presence for light and love. And yet I also know that there are moments these other things arise. And so the greatest gift I can give is to honor what shows up and being able to process and allow it and then also honor for others. Sometimes we think, oh, I'm above all that. I don't watch the news. I haven't watched it for years. True. I haven't tended to watch the news either, but I am keeping up and aware. Um, one of our minister friends said the other day, she, Reverend Sheila Gatro, I watch the news because it's my prayer list. That's where I get my prayer list, who I'm praying for today or what I'm praying about today. And I love that. You know, I think that we get to have compassion and not become spiritually arrogant to think that we're above all of this. We all are gonna have moments that we're impacted, affected, and our true compassion means that we have a deep empathy and understanding for others without feeling we need to grovel with what someone is experiencing. We're going to lift them, but we can have that awareness in that moment, that experience, whatever that might be. And it also means that we step aside from metaphysical malpractice. Metaphysical malpractice is when I am wanting to expect you to hold a metaphysical standard that, uh, and I am claiming metaphysics on you that you're out of alignment or you know you shouldn't be doing something. Anytime I'm shooting on someone else um, or myself, then I am I'm doing a type of metaphysical malpractice. And so I want to invite us, we'll look more at this in depth on Sunday and look at ways that we can truly rise into compassion. What is that? How do we live it out in new ways beyond what we've done before? And those of us that are activists or that in various ways, spiritual activists, we still have an opportunity to rise into these times and create even greater connectivity greater compassion, love, and, and an experience of oneness with others. And yes, we've got much more to come and we don't know what that means. We're in a, the mystery right now. So I would invite us as best you can to not allow the fear to take the better of you. And yet if it does, be gentle with yourself. Love yourself through it. To trust that this too shall pass as all things do. We are learning the impermanence of things on the earth. We're learning that the infinite is what is in charge and that as we surrender into that, there's actually greater freedom to be who we are in the moment without all the demands and expectations that we live up to a certain something. Instead, let's just be fully present to be fe feeling the love, sharing the love, being the light and being real with one another. I think that's important during this time and trusting that we will find ways to support each other through this and we will all be stronger and better and more equipped as we go into this new world that is being created, this new time that is rising through the consciousness of humanity. I am honored to be on the path with you and look forward to the ways that we continue to shine and glow or struggle whatever it might be, we'll do it together. Unity Bay Area Houston will still be live streaming on Facebook coming this Sunday, but we're gonna be adding a live stream on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. That channel right now is under Reverend Kira, K-Y-R-A, Bayer, B-A-E-H-R. Our Facebook live stream is Unity Bay Area Houston on the Facebook page and we'll live stream there. So we hope you'll join us for one of our Sunday celebration services so that we can connect even deeper and more powerfully carry the light and the love into the world. May you all feel your wholeness, your vitality, the truth of your oneness with spirit right here and right now. We're gonna sing 
Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. I'm so glad every little cell in my body is happy and well. I'm so glad every little cell in my body is happy and well. I sing that for me, I sing that for you. God bless you, friends. Have a fabulous week. Hope to see you online Sunday.